Hey guys, it's Scary Gamer here, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings, Chapter Two. This is a fun game. I'm liking it so far. Let's just go straight into it. Another day, another morning. I woke from dreams filled with fire and smoke. The sun shining through the window gave me a comforting feeling of familiarity, despite the portal in the distance reminding me of my purpose here. I looked towards the horizon, my view undisturbed by dividing walls. The light of the morning sun was painting the sky with golden hues, a view that had become a rarity back home. It evoked a feeling of freedom and openness that was almost scary to me. While I got ready for the day, my thoughts strayed to the people I knew back home. I couldn't help but wonder how they were doing. But I had greater things to worry about at the moment, like Razor, murderers, generators. How much danger was I in, really? It's Bryce, he smams. Hey Chief, more bad news? Not quite, unless you count Razor still missing as bad news. But that's kind of why I'm here. Well, what is it? Just some good old fashioned police work. I'm counting on your help again. It's not like I have anything better to do. Alright. We obtained a list of places Razor visited in the days before he vanished. We'll check those out, maybe find a lead, and you might help us understand his motivations or give us some context to his actions. I can certainly try. I'm sure you'll do a great job. There's a couple of places we can check out. Let's see where we should go first. While Bryce focused on his list, I saw some people approach out of the corner of my eye. A closer look revealed that it was Sebastian, waving his arm in an attempt to get our attention as he ran towards us, his face grave. There you are, Chief. I was looking for you. What are you doing here? Don't tell me there's another dead person. Sorry, Chief. There is. Of course, the coincidental dead person. Woo. Guess it's going to be one of those days. Yeah, it looks like that way. Hi. Someone else can take care of that today, though. We've got other plans. You'll need to sign off on a few things, at least. I know, I know. We'll go to the crime scene, sign a few forms, and then we're out. What's happened now? When we arrived this, at the scene, I saw the poor victim next to one of the houses. The obligatory sheet that was draped over him provided a modicum of discretion. But that did nothing to hide the crime that had occurred. Right, give me the story. It's an interesting one, that's for sure. The wounds match those of the last victim, so a similar, if not identical, murder weapon is likely. The victim? Maintenance person for this area, and the electricity is out. The power goes out, maintenance guy shows up and is killed before he can fix the problem. At least that's my theory. So the power of the whole block is still out? That is correct. We should get that fixed as soon as possible. We don't need civilians showing up around here complaining about sitting in the dark. Bryce's snout wrinkled with distaste as he glanced over Sebastian's shoulder. Damn, not again. What is it? Maverick shows up as well! Oh, thank you. What are you doing here, Maverick? A second victim, huh? This is an official investigation, so you'd better not cross that police line. Shunned by my own colleagues. This is ridiculous. You know how it is. Rules are rules. And without rules, murders like this one would be allowed to happen and go unpunished. <laughs> Have your fun without me then. What do you think he wanted here, Chief? That one's easy. To do his own investigation, just like he said he would. I sh shouldn't be surprised he showed up. But I guess we're lucky we arrived before he did. I agree. We'd better check out the power outage now. Of course, I think the door to the maintenance room is right around here. You got your flashlight, Seb? Always, Chief. We should go first, then. I don't have my stuff here. Besides, putting on that head mount is such a hassle. I remember you complain about it every time it comes up. There, that should do the trick. This kind of reminds me of when we found that underground base or whatever it was. Remember, Chief? How could I not? It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> underground base? Yeah, the portal wasn't the only piece of ancient technology we found. There was also this whole lab near it. We seemed to have some sort of high-tech stuff in there. Wait, so you not only found the portal, but a whole facility along with it? Yes, but we're not sure how much the two are actually related. We spent all that time studying the portal and barely got anywhere with it. This stuff is just beyond what we know. So what, are we going to have to turn on the power ourselves? I'm not, a tech, I'm not an electrician. So what exactly are we looking for? Whatever's causing the power outage. 
If we don't find the cause, we should at least be able to get the backup running. Looks like the generator is gone. Mystery solved. The sound of creaking metal penetrated the stillness of the room. I looked above towards the source of the noise as it grew louder. And in the next instant, I was pushed sideways and fell to the ground, just barely avoiding the giant light fixture that fell from the ceiling and shattered into countless pieces alongside me. Smams, are you right? The next thing I saw was a hooded figure standing above me, barely visible against the darkness that permeated the room. Ooh, who's this? It's probably Razor. Or a new character. Ooh. The figure crouched down next to me, its mask hovering right in front of my face. Merely a whisper reached my ears when it spoke. Be careful, Smams. Then the figure dashed towards the stairs. Where are you going? That That's not me. Don't move. He's going up the stairs. I'm on it. I didn't even see that chair coming. I can't see a damn thing in here. Here, Chief. I hate these stupid stairs. You're blocking the way. Just go around me. There's no room. You're as wide as the stairs are. I can't help. Damn it, we'll never catch him now. By the time we found our way back up, the mysterious figure was nowhere to be found. We've got a long search ahead of us. With a head start like that, there might be no end to it. We have to take our chances as long as we still can. Except that chance is growing smaller and smaller while we wait for the team to arrive. What even happened down there? Right, Smams, tell us everything in as much detail as you can. You were there too! You should... My eyesight... How, 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 I don't know what a dragon's eyesight is like, is it worse than mine or, or what? You don't know if mine's better than yours or... We all saw the same thing. There wasn't much to it. I heard a noise, I looked up, the light fixture came down and someone pushed me. You mean Razor? I'm not so sure of that. I... Yeah, I, it could be Razor, but I mean he was wearing shoes and stuff and he... The fact that he was wearing a mask means that he couldn't really have a snout. So I guess so. What do you mean? Didn't you see him? Whoever it was was wearing a mask. Bloody well can't be someone else, so let's not kid ourselves here. Why would he wear that whole get up though? Yeah, recognition. That's a bad excuse when there are only two humans here. This whole thing doesn't make any sense. Just take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Your earlier theory about what happened was pretty sound, Sebastian. Let's go with that, and add the bit about the generator being stolen. So now the question is, who has a motive for stealing a generator? Also Razor. Right, who else would need to steal a generator when those who live here could either buy or even simply request one? Not to mention Razor was the one who arranged the diplomatic trade for the generators in the first place. Can't deny that your generators are pretty important to us, but resorting to murder? We all saw the human figure running away. <clears throat> Why would he have stayed here if he stole it? The generator was already gone when we got here, and the person in question wasn't carrying it either. Perhaps this is a case where the criminal has returned to the crime scene. For this kind of crime? I'd say no, but who knows? Maybe our rules just don't apply anymore. What do you mean? No offense, but ever since you two humans arrived, there have been a lot of strange things going on. This place used to be a quiet town. Maybe this is just a huge misunderstanding and he needs someone to talk to him. Let's put this into perspective. We found two corpses so far. Razor is the prime suspect, and you think all he needs is someone to talk to him? Sorry, but I'll be going with a no on that one. Maybe we should just focus on finding him and point fingers later. Agreed. The police team will be here any minute now. You don't have to get involved with the search, but that doesn't mean you can't help us. What do you want me to do? We still have the list of places we're going to check out, remember? We can't go now, the search takes priority. Of course, we'll still check out those places after we're done here, but if you go on your own, you can speed up the process. You could even find a lead for us, who knows? Unless we really are understaffed if you need to rely on me. There's less to do with my staff and more with what I told you last time. You know him, and that gives you experience that can help us 
understand how he thinks. That's the kind of help we really need. In any case, here's a list. Considering your status, you shouldn't have any trouble in these places. But if anything happens, call me and I'll check up on you later. Wait a minute, you mean I'm going all by myself? All of us are going to be pretty busy with the search, and we can't really afford to spare someone right now. You'll be fine. Aren't you worried I'll do something fishy? I mean, isn't that why Razor and I were assigned police escorts in the first place? That policy was mostly Maverick's fault, and he's out of the picture. With my authority as chief, I say you can go alone. I already know where you're going, and besides, I trust you. If you were in cahoots with Razor, you would have run off with him when you had the chance. Good point. Uh, I see the team approaching. Guess you should get going. Alright, I'll see you later then. It was a relief to leave the crime scene, considering all that happened. When I reached into my pocket to take a look at the list, however, I found something unexpected. It was a small piece of paper with the word Tatsu written on it. How did it get here? My earlier encounter with the masked person was the only time today someone was close enough to smuggle something into my pocket. I figured if someone like Bryce tried to do something like that, I definitely would have noticed. As for Tatsu, the only related thing I could think of was Tatsu Pa, which I had come across when I went to the police station the other day. Even if that park was the place the mysterious paper referred to, I didn't know if it was actually a good idea to visit. The masked person may have saved me from the falling light fixture, but if it was Razor, it would mean following someone who was also the prime suspect of two murders. I also had to consider the list of places Razor had been to. A local grocery store, the production facility we had visited, and the library were the three places closest to here. It certainly was going to be a busy day, and I knew I wouldn't have the time to visit all of them. Let's go to the, gro gro ugh, the grocery store. I entered the store, the sound of a bell alerting the staff to my arrival. Seeing the patients browsing the shelves, neatly stocked with wares of all kinds, evoked some feelings of nostalgia and normalcy in me. This must be the store Razor's been shopping at. Oh, he's got a cool design. Who's he talking to? Hey, I think we've seen her before. Ah! Sorry, but this prescription has expired. I can't fill it like this. You need to tell your parents to visit the doctor so we can write you a new one. It just doesn't say anything. She turned around, nearly running into me when she suddenly bolted back towards the door. Hello, Smems. How can I help you? You know who I am? How could I not? Everyone knows about you. Anyway, how can I help? Should we ask about Razor or about the dragon? I'm curious about this dragon character. I'm going to ask about her. You mean the girl? That's Vara. She comes here occasionally to pick up her mother's prescription. Alright, you have Razor coming here. Of course I do. It's only been a few days since he was last here. This will sound a little unusual, but can you tell me what he bought? Are you just talking about last time or every time he came here? Both, I suppose. He came here more than once? He's been visiting pretty regularly now that I think about it. I can look up his purchases if you like. That would be really helpful. Shouldn't be too hard, just give me a second. Watch him carefully navigate the registers button, soon followed by the sound of the attached printer. Here you go, receipts from all his purchases. Since our government takes care of all his purchases, they're filed separately. It was simple to pull them up. Looks like he bought mostly food and snacks, sometimes magazines. But why was he buying lemons every single time? I can't say that I didn't notice, but I figured it was just a human thing. In any case, that was more information than I expected. Yeah, my thanks. You're welcome. Right, let's go to the production facility. We'll probably come across Anna. So, yeah. So the next time we meet is not a date. Mm. Razor was allegedly here at some point. Maybe I should ask Anna. Hello? Just the knocking gets more aggressive. Ooh! Can I help you? I was just looking for Anna. This is her lab, right? Why don't I ever get any recognition? This is my lab as much as it is hers. Either way, Anna is not here. Would that be all? Since you work here, maybe you can help me instead. Of course, your precious Anna isn't here, so you'll have to settle for me. I'll s I see how that is. 
That's not what I meant. Of course, of course. Let's just get this over with. You can start by telling me who you are. Here's a short version. My name is Damien. I work in this facility, and I'm unfortunate enough to live the nightmare of having to deal with Anna on a daily basis. Nice to meet you. And you are? You don't know who I am? Of course I know who you are, but your assumption validated the point that I was going to make. You see, this whole thing about you coming here has been blown out of proportion. Like it's some huge event that everyone should be celebrating. News flash, not everyone cares. Once both of you are gone, life will return to normal and we can all go back to whatever we actually should be doing. I imagine a lot of it has to do with those human myths you have. I can only reiterate, not everyone cares. What exactly did you want again? Yeah, let's just go straight to Razor. Do you know anything about Razor's visits to this facility? I've seen him a few times. He would come by to ask about the progress of the generators. And there was this one time when Anna told him she'd have news. But when he came over, she wanted to run some tests on him. Did he go through with it? No, he wanted some compensation, I suppose. Nothing she could offer satisfied him, however. That was that. How long have you known, Anna? Why do you care about that? Maybe I want to find out what kind of person she is. You might have an idea. I mean, I am going out on a date with her apparently now, so... I'll put it this way, I've known her far too long. What kind of research is she doing? Cancer research. She thinks she can cure it, but she's out of her mind. Is that such a bad thing? The way she does it? Yes. She's wanting resources that could be better spent on projects with an actual chance of success. What about you? Nothing special unless you care a lot about genetics. And we're not talking about the basics here, but the deep stuff. That's all. Bye. You interrogated Damien. The afternoon sun hung low in the sky, and I decided it was time to report my findings to the police. A brief call to the department, and I was on my way to an appointment with Sebastian. I'm not sure how my findings will help, but at least I have something. So you can only, say, pick two options. Okay, so you can't find everything, you've only got to, you've got to pick and choose, interesting. Ah, I turned around to see Maverick. The ambience! Oh! I turned around to see Maverick. His intense gaze confirmed that there was no one else his words could have been directed at. Even with the civilians passing by in the background, I suddenly felt very alone. What do you want from me? Answers. What if I don't have any for you? So now whether I'm being interrogated, then you will listen. Just tell me one thing. Why? What is your goal in all this? Why even come here? You know why? We came as ambassadors for humanity and to oversee... To, I thought he'd resta I'd restate it, but apparently not. Okay, no, 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 that won't do. That's simply not true. You know it and I know it. I just don't get why you can't be honest with me, even when you know no one else is listening. You know I can't touch you. If I did, it would be over for me. At least, as long as I don't have any proof. In the end, what difference does it make if I know? No one is going to believe me anyway. Do you wish to kill me too? Like Razor? Never. Is that so? Tell me, why would an ambassador need such a dangerous tool in the first place? I know you claim not to have one of those things Razor injured me with, and you didn't have any when they searched you. But I guess it's way too late for safety precautions at this point. You could have been one anywhere. That damn hurt, you know. But even worse than that was getting thrown aside by Bryce. I trust him. But after what happened, he doesn't trust me anymore. Now there's only you. The mythical. The special. The new. So we're gonna be playing a two-sided story here. Hmm. How much I wish I could make him see what I see. I could have saved the world with what I did that day, and it still wouldn't matter when no one believes me, just because I don't have any proof. But I won't stop until I find some. And when I do, I'm going to be a damn hero. With that, he was gone. On the way to the police station, Maverick's words kept finding their way back into my mind. I couldn't decide how to feel about them. I wasn't even sure if it was worth mentioning to the police, since all they did was make vague accusations. 
wasn't anything substantial enough to be considered a threat. However, his actions were growing more calculated, and he seemed very sure of himself. I wondered about what this could amount to, but that wasn't the problem at hand. Hey, Smams. Hey, Sebastian, I thought I'd meet you at the front desk. What are we doing in Bryce's office? I love this music! Oh my gosh, this game is such a great soundtrack! He does have a nice office, doesn't he? And the chairs are comfy. Is that the only reason we're in here? The dragon gave a brief chuckle. Let's just say that any information pertaining to this case is important enough to warrant some privacy. Will Bryce be here anytime soon? I don't think so. He's still outside looking for Razor. He's not the kind of person who gives up easily. Sounds like him. That's Bryce for you. Once he sets a mind on it, something, he sees it through to the end. That's why he's our chief. He gets things done. At this rate, it doesn't look like we'll find him today. It could be anywhere. Long gone, beyond our reach. What do you think? To be honest, I don't know. Yes, yeah, he restates it here! Why did he restate it the other- It's okay. I have no idea what he's doing or what his plan is, really. I wonder what will happen to our trade agreement now, considering Razor's still missing, the murders, and the stolen generator. If Razor really is the murderer, then... Don't do that. What? Worry. You don't know what's at stake here. People are dead, Smans. Do you think I don't know that? Razor may be our prime suspect, but he's also a missing person. For all we know, he could be a victim. Maybe someone is making him do this. My point is that we don't know the facts yet. All we need to do is find him and find the murderer. We'll find Razor and go from there. We'll figure it out. Thanks, Sebastian. Anyway, you said you had some information for us. So what did you find? The receipts you got are interesting. There might be something more to them. Or they could just be a useless record of his eating habits. You never know what you might find out about a person, their habits, or their plans this way. I'm not sure if there's anything special about Anna wanting Razor's blood. I mean, she's a scientist, so it's natural that she'd be interested in something like that. We'll have to ask her about it, though. Maybe she has some more details for us. Well done, Smams. That gives us some solid points for which we can continue our investigation. In any case, thanks for your help. We really do appreciate it. That should be all, then. Since Bryce still hasn't come back, I assume the search is still going on, and I'd better get out there and help him. This is going to be a long day. Can you find your way back to your apartment? Of course. Alright, see you later. Finally, some free time. Whatever am I going to do? Looks like there are some messages on the answering machine. Let's see. I just wanted to update you. I still don't have an open slot in the facility for your tests, but I'll be free if you want to cash in your award. You know I'm busy, so this is your chance for your date, if you even still want to go through with it. Take it or leave it, I don't care much either way. In any case, you know where to find me. Guess the choice is mine. Let's go meet with Anna. Let's go chase her up on this. And uh, I might, might go talk, because uh, I think we get two choices, because I was allowed two choices at the end of last chapter. So let's, let's talk to Anna, and then we'll talk to someone else. Probably, let's try Lorem. Hello? What's this? Looks like a message. Something came up at the last second. Wait for me, it shouldn't be too long, Anna. Well, I guess at the last second is meant in a literal sense here, or else she could have just called me. Guess we're playing the waiting game then. And she never shows up! <laughs> I'm not sure who the world record holder for most patient person is, but now I feel like a contender. I want this date! <laughs> Still no sign of her though. Really? Try to get into a lab, let's just break in. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna score myself some sweet lab equipment. That's the least she can do for making me wait. Or maybe I'll just wait inside. Standing around here is getting rather tedious. Chances are she's probably gone home. Pushing the door does nothing, now that it's pulling. Guess I'm out of options here. Hey, what's this? The bottom of the door, the corner of an envelope is already noticeably sticking out. Let's take it. Pulling at the corner, I was now holding the envelope in my hands. Well, I guess I've got to pass the time somehow, right? Let's see. Dear Anna, appointments for next month. Treatment plan. Dr. Valido. I probably shouldn't be looking at this. Quickly, I put the letter back into the envelope and pushed it through the gap in the door. 
What are you looking at? Your beautiful door! <laughs> Why have you been on this? Beautiful door! It's a blank! All the doors in here look blank! If that one's anything to go by, and the one Damien walked through. Reading comprehension must not be your strong suit, because my note clearly said I'd be back soon. Note to self, the word soon now refers to a time span of over two hours when waiting for a scheduled appointment. That makes complete sense. Thank you, thank you for establishing that, Anna. Has it really been that long? I certainly didn't feel like it. <coughs> Alright, sorry for making you wait. It's a great start for a date, isn't it? You better be. <laughs> I just told you that I am, so get off my back. Do you want this date now or what? I suppose so. I guess we missed our movie. Well, no, duh! You spent two hours doing whatever the heck you were doing. Can we see the late screening or something? That was the late screening. The theatre's closed now. Well, I guess this is my only option for tonight then, because everyone else is going to be sleepy buyers. Oh well. Maybe we should reschedule. That won't work. At least not for me. Today was the only day I could leave early. I won't have another chance anytime soon. Well, why did you go do something else when you knew this was the only time you'd be free? This is my reward. I want my reward. Maybe the coffee place is still open. I don't know. Guess it's better than nothing. Closed as well. Well, that's just peachy. Why do you keep working so late anyway? Because what I'm doing is important. You're doing cancer research, right? And who told you that? Damien. I stopped by your lab some time ago, but you weren't there. That shabborn bastard. What else did you say? Nothing much. The whole thing wasn't really about you anyway. Sounds like you two don't get along that well. That's the understatement of the century. Being trapped in a small room with the likes of him for hours on end every day is a scenario born of a sick mind with the intention of making me suffer as much as possible. It certainly doesn't make my research any easier. The stress probably doesn't help you either. And that's not and it's not worth jeopardizing your health over. Don't overwork yourself. Can't save anyone if you're dead. I don't find a cure, no one else will. No one else can. Let's just enjoy our romantic date in the back alley of a coffee shop. Of course, unless you want to take this someplace else. What, you don't like hanging around dirty back alleys? I prefer someplace less dirty. <laughs> I guess that's a valid point. You could always go back to your lab. And have you hanging around sensitive lab equipment? Denied. Have a chance for you to get your blood samples or whatever the heck you wanted from me. I'm getting kind of hungry. I figured we'd be having a meal on our date. What, can't you go a few hours without having to stuff your face? I'd offer you a handful of dirt if that's to your taste, Smems. That, that's gross. How can you even think about doing something like that? I bet you're one of those people who never ate dirt when they were young. That's how you develop allergies. Can't you think of something else? Well, there's this one place that never closes. Let's just go there. Sure. It's like gonna be some sort of like takeaway place or something. Oh no, it's a farm. Fun place. After several minutes of walking, Anna led me to the outskirts of town. We arrived at a farmhouse. On one side, fields stretched towards the horizon, and on the other were lush green hills with fenced populations of animals. What kind of restaurant is this supposed to be? Self serve. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously doubt that. Just think about it this way, what's the worst that could happen? We get caught and maybe they'll tell me to compensate them. Or just say it was your idea and that you didn't know it was forbidden or something. You have diplomatic immunity so there's nothing they could do. How well can you hunt? Me. Even if I knew how, it's not like I have any equipment here. Equipment? What a sissy. You've got hands and teeth, what more do you need? A long-range weapon, maybe? Like fire? I suppose even you can make use of that. Alright, since I'm apparently the only one capable of acquiring food, I'll be right back. Anna walked over to a fenced enclosure of animals that reminded me of sheep. She crashed and squeezed herself through the bars, after which I lost sight of her. It took only a couple minutes for her to return, dragging one of the animals behind her with her now bloody jaws and hands. Dinner's ready. What kind of animal is this? It's called a mouflon. Anyway, do you have a part you'd prefer? See how nice I am? I'm even letting you choose first. 
I'm not hungry anymore. It's raw! It's raw, Melissa! Nah, she'll probably cook it. She's a dragon. She's got fire. Hopefully. Ah, uh, let's, let's go anything. Okay. Using one of her claws, she skinned the dead mouflon and divided it into various pieces. Do you want yours grilled or raw? Grilled! Unless prepared properly, raw meat carries a significant risk of diseases for us. How inept can your species even be? You can't hunt on your own, and you need tools and help at every step. You don't even have claws to cut things up. I'm not sure how you could ever survive in the wild. Seriously, what god did you piss off to end up like that? None. Humans were made in gods. Do you really believe that? I do. How cute. I guess that's one way to make yourself feel superior to other species. <laughs> oh my god. She opened up her maw wide before a liquid shot from both corners of her mouth and onto the ground below the parts of the mouflon she had prepared. After a few seconds the liquid burst into flame, heating up our dinner. That's a neat trick. I bet you wish you could do that, huh? How about you, uh, you clean the mess off your face? No, I, uh, ooh, I mean... Being able to light a fire like that would be pretty cool. Right? Comes in handy. How does that work anyway? Don't you ever burn your mouth? Not at all. There are actually two different components. They only catch on fire when a sufficient quality of both is present. Interesting. Yeah, cl clean yourself up. The flames weakened and grew smaller until they went out, revealing steamy, appetizing pieces of meat. Help yourself. I grabbed a piece, but dropped it as soon as I felt the heat on my fingertips. Ouch, that's still hot. Well, no, the eyes just came off the grill. Can't take a little heat, huh? That's too bad. Unaffected by its temperature, she took a piece into her hand, tore a chunk out of it with her teeth, and started chewing. Guess your scales are a good insulator. Evidently so. How does it taste? Just wonderful. Stolen goods always taste best. I can already picture the old farmer reduced to tears after he discovers one of his precious mouflons is gone. You're... Yeah, <laughs> knock it off. It's bad enough that you roped me into all this, and now you're making fun of the person you stole from. Seriously, knock it off. If he didn't want someone to steal other things, he should have built a taller fence. You're a dragon. You have. You. Big creature is strong. Just <clears throat> break it. Tear the fence down. If you had wings, I'm sure you could fly over it as well. But ha! Huh? How would you feel if I just walked into your lab and took your stuff, which I was planning on doing at one point? You wouldn't be able to, because I actually take security seriously. I think it should be cool enough for your sensitive little fingers now. Carefully grabbed one of the pieces which by now had indeed cooled down enough to not burn me anymore, and took a bite. It was a little bland, I had to admit, but not bad for something that was alive less than an hour ago, and prepared in the wild. How do you like your mouflon a la Anna? <laughs> Could use a few spices. I'm not one to destroy a perfectly good piece of meat with stupid vegetables, but you can put some grass on it if you like. It's not quite the same thing. How often do you just go out and hunt on your own? Only when necessary, or when I feel like it. I still go to fancy restaurants because I can afford it, but they don't mean much to me. For me it's all about the experience, and one isn't necessarily better than the other. I mean, gotta, gotta spend a, an interesting night out in the open, under the stars. Wish you would've cleaned your face up a bit because, uh, Having a, a date with a dragon girl with blood all over her face is, is a bit is a bit weird and awkward considering there's blood all over your face. I can see your point. This certainly isn't how I thought the evening would go, but it was pretty fun. Anyways, I'm stuffed. Me too. There's still plenty left over. What are we going to do with it all? We can just leave it here. And maybe the old farmer will help himself to it. Will this attract predators or something? So what, they need to eat too. We should probably leave before that senile has-been wakes up from his evening nap. Yeah, let's go. And you better clean yourself up too. Thank you. 
And why are we going back to the lab? Just walk each other to each other's homes. Like a great first date, you know? Why do we have to go back to the lab and make the journey longer for both of us? Can I ask you something? Did you really have to make me wait two hours so you could finish whatever you were doing? I had something important to take care of in the lab. I just wanted to get it over with. Oh, so you were in the lab the whole time, huh? Maybe you should start thinking about not working so late on a regular basis. It might do you some good, Anna. How dare you tell me what to do? Maybe if you got out a little more, you wouldn't be so choleric all the time. When did you become such a know-it-all? Oh, wait, you have been this whole time, and you know what? It's getting old real fast. Your attitude only proves my point, you know. My work is my business, not yours. Keep your nose out of it and get back to whatever it is you're supposed to be doing here. Hey, I was only trying to help. Yeah, you know how you can help me right now. By getting the cuss out of here. <laughs> Alright, I'm leaving. Thank you. Well, that was a way to end the first date, isn't it? It's the middle of the day. Order some lunch. Order some lunch? We just had dinner. We just ate. It was the middle of the night. I think this needs a proper, like, you know, you know, time recognition system. Or it, like, blanks out some options depending on what time it is or something. <laughs> uh, anyway. That's, that's this episode done. It's about 50 minutes. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe if you already haven't done so. Um, Angels with Scaly Wings is fun. I really enjoy this game. And um, I'll get some more done soon. Um, so yeah, see you in the next video. Bye!